Why after all that? Well, regular viewers to the channel will know that when Triumph announced their two new 400s last summer, I took such a shine to the Scrambler that I had put a deposit down so I could get one of the first examples. Just before Christmas, however, in a fit of parsimony combined with the realisation that I probably didn't actually need a 400cc motorbike, I cancelled my order and got my deposit back. Then, about two weeks ago, I rode the Speed 400 and was pretty much blown away by what fantastic value for money it is. And I began to wonder if I should have kept my order for the Scrambler, especially as the green ones are now all sold out across Europe until the end of the year. Well, now I've ridden it, and I think the speed is actually the better of the two. Here's why. So now you've got the backstory, let's first have a look at the Scrambler on its own, and then I'll get on to why I'd personally go for the speed. First off, the looks, which I confess are what draw me to the bike in the first place. It's a very handsome machine, with wide handlebars and a centre pad embroidered with the Triumph logo. You get handguards, which for once don't feel too flimsy, headlight grille, two-section brown seat, and twin end can on what's been cleverly designed to look like a straight-through exhaust. You get cooling fins to make the engine look like a retro air-cooled. It's all there. Very impressive. The Scrambler's quite a bit taller than the Speed, and looks like a bike from the category above. From the side, if you focus on the engine, I have to say it doesn't look that different to my Speed Twin 1200. As with the Speed 400, the fit and finish is really excellent, particularly given the price point. Cables are routed tidily, you get excellent paintwork that's almost impossible to distinguish from that of my Speed Twin, or from any other bike in the Triumph range for that matter, the exquisitely finished Rocket 3 included. The tank would look quite at home on a Scrambler 1200, and you get gold forks, shower too this time, where the Speed gets unbranded. I know this is a subjective thing, but all things considered, I think the 400X is one of the best looking bikes, if not the best looking bike, for under €10,000 at the moment, and for many that's a huge consideration at the point of purchase. Quite an achievement for a bike priced at just over 6000 Acceleration to merge with traffic, as you can see here, is adequate, fairly brisk and certainly much safer than with a 125. Gear change is very smooth, no clunkiness and the clutch lever is very light. The only problem is the short gearing, especially the first three ratios. Great for urban riding as you can access most if not all of the 40 horsepower, which is produced at a fairly lofty 8000 RPM to get away from traffic, but the downside of course is buzziness at higher speeds. Cruising at just 100 km an hour or 60 miles an hour for instance sees you sitting at 6000 RPM. As with the speed, this is really a bike for the city and a casual ride out on Sundays. It can handle the twisties fine especially the sort of speeds that the engine is going to allow you to get up to between the bends, but the gearing means it's no motorway cruiser, and it wouldn't be my first choice for a cross-continent tour, but in fairness, I think we all know that. I'm 6 foot 2 or 187 centimetres tall, and while the speed didn't exactly feel cramped, there's obviously more room on the larger scrambler. Seat height is 835 millimetres instead of 790, which gives more legroom. And I think they must have also repositioned the pegs slightly, as my heels were no longer rubbing on the passenger pegs, as they had done on the speed. Other differences with the speed include a 19-inch wheel at the front, with reinforced spokes for more off-road durability, a bash plate, slightly different geometry, and Metzler Carew Street tyres, which seem to be the go-to semi-off-road tyre of the moment. I have them both on my Honda Transalp 750 and ADV 350 scooter, and I've got no complaints. They're an 8020 tyre, and in my experience, offer good grip both on and off-road. 179 kilos wet, only a 13 litre tank, but as I average just 3.3 litres per 100 kilometres, which is 85 mpg UK, 71 US, during the time that I had the bike, you should easily get a range of around 380 kilometers or 240 miles. The dash is simple, but for the most part legible, only the rev counter is a bit too simplistic and difficult to read at a glance. Otherwise it's pretty basic, but you do get everything you need, including on the scrambler, not on the speed, the ability to switch off traction control. I tried it very briefly here, okay, not the most arduous off-road course ever, but it was all I could find, and it works, or rather doesn't, with the traction control off 
and even with only 40 horsepower you can light up the rear wheel easily on a slippery track like this. Great fun. However, for some reason, the longer travel suspension compared to the street didn't seem able to soak up the bumps very well. It's on the firm side, something I noticed on the tarmac too. The ride seemed more composed on the speed, which is kind of the opposite of what you'd expect. The X's double seat is slightly thicker though, and this goes some way to making up for the firmer suspension. The 19 inch front wheel on the Scrambler also makes it feel noticeably less agile, less quick to turn in on the road, which is where owners will I suspect be doing 95% of their riding. The single front brake gets a slightly larger 320mm disc with the same by brake calipers, but Triumph or Bajaj have given the Scrambler different pads to soften up the feel I presume for off-roading. Now, softer, less aggressive brakes is what you want off-road, but on-road the, the result is less convincing. The Scrambler's brakes are good, and fortunately the rear brake is strong on both models, but I prefer the feel and extra confidence that's provided by the improved bite on the speed setup. Now before I get on to my final thoughts and why I'd still prefer a speed, a quick word on quality control and general reliability. As I said in the Speed 400 video, when I'm planning one of these quick tests, or if I'm interested in buying a particular bike for myself, I'll join a few Facebook groups to glean information from around the world on things like delivery dates, aftermarket accessories, first impressions, and sometimes issues with the bike. Now of course, most brand new bikes have teething problems. You may have heard about BMW's recent starter relay recall on their €25,000 1300GS and this now infamous photo of a Scrambler 400X owner in India dropping his bike and splitting the swing arm wide open. As I said in the speed video, while it is important to take this kind of information on board, you probably shouldn't let it influence your buying decision too much. As I will now illustrate with this second example I came across. A YouTuber again in India posted a video about an oil leak on his scrambler after just 2,500 kilometers. He was adamant that it wasn't the oil filler cap because it was tightly screwed in and that it could only be a perished head gasket. 10,000 views. Second video, a few days later, after a visit to his local Triumph dealer, turns out it was the oil filler cap after all. The mechanic who carried out the oil change had cross-threaded it, hence the tightness, and so oil was leaking out. This second video got 5,000 views. Now, I'm not blaming the YouTuber at all. He highlighted a problem he believed he had, and then had the decency to post a second video to explain that it was nothing after all. But, human nature being what it is, twice as many people were drawn to his predicament than were interested in the positive outcome. And the end result is that about 5,000 people now believe this 400cc engine might have head gasket issues. Fake news like this must be incredibly frustrating to Bajaj and Triumph, so I would encourage you to take these horror stories you see online with a pinch of salt. So the thumbnail says I prefer the Speed 400 over the Scrambler 400X. And insofar as it's a nicer bike to ride, that's true, it's more comfortable. The suspension, surprisingly, seemed more compliant, at least with my 90 kilos sitting on it. The front brake is stronger, turning is better with the 17 inch wheel, and it doesn't feel that much smaller than the Scrambler, even for my 6 foot 2 frame. The Scrambler does have two big arguments in its favour, of course its ability to dabble in some off roading and its looks. The speed is handsome, but the Scrambler has it beat, and I will freely admit that I would love to have one sitting in my garage. Unfortunately, the limitations inherent in a 40 horsepower 400cc engine on European roads at least, and by that I mean that it's no good for cruising at high speed, mean that sitting in my garage as an ornament is probably how it would spend most of its life. I'll tell you what the Scrambler is for me, maybe a bit of a controversial comparison. It's an adult size Honda Grom. Just as much fun, and I would argue having owned a Grom for myself three years ago, much more versatile and real-world practical. The Speed 400 and Scrambler 400X are both lovely bikes, but neither, unfortunately, is for me. Anyway, that's all for today. I know some of my viewers in India have already owned these bikes for a few months, so let us know in the comments if you've encountered any reliability issues. 
and how you're enjoying, enjoying the riding experience. And as always, thanks for watching.